What's up, you guys? Marty Schwartz here of Marty Music, MartyMusic.com, Marty Music the Flamethrower, all that stuff. May the Schwartz be with you. Uh, anyway, going to break down a lesson right now that's a special request. Get a lot of requests for mixing chords with licks. So I have one blues concept that I want to show you right now. I think you'll really enjoy it, so let's get into it. I'm going to take the chords that we're going to take these little uh, double stops from, or dyads. An A7 chord is the one chord. Just like an E bar chord with the pinky off. The four chord is a D, and I'm going to play a D9, which would be... And then the final chord is E9, which is just this chord up a whole step. Now there is the minor pentatonic and the blues scale over any of those chords and it, it always sounds good. And any licks that you're working on, tons of resources to learn some licks. I recommend you should have at least like four or five basic little licks right now for this lesson, but it's all good. You're going to learn something, hopefully. So A7, D9, E9. D9, A7, right? So if we look at these chords, I'm going to show you this one shape that happens in all three chords. And it's a great way to mix in between licks when you uh, have this little thing. So for the A7 chord, it's we're going to just play on the D and G string. So if I just took my fingers away, I would be left, you know, so it's from this, but I'm just playing two of the notes right here. So fifth fret on the D, sixth fret on the G, and I play those two notes. That second chord, which is D9, is right here. And if you look, it actually has that same shape right here. So then it would be fourth fret on the D, fifth fret on the G. So that's for the, the four chord or the D9. Now if you see the third chord, which is E9, it has that same shape too, but it's the sixth fret D, seventh fret G. So literally just three half steps apart, this shape exists underneath the full chord. So for the A7, right here, five and six. And then it goes to the four chord, and we're just going to move it down a half step. So this is for D9. Back to the A9, just up a half step. And then the turnaround, you just move it up a half step to the E9. Then down a whole step. Then up a half step. Then for the turnaround. So I'll say the name of the chord as I play that now. So here's A7, which would be six, I'm sorry, five and six. A7, A7, A7. Down a half step, it's D9, the four chord, D9. Back to A7. Now we're gonna move it up a half step for E9, down a whole step for the D9, then up a half step for the A7, and then a turnaround on the E. Now the four chord. Then the five chord. So guess what I left all that open space for? You got it for licks. So a great way to start is just try your minor pentatonic. However, you can see that some of the notes outside of the pentatonic, you can visually see sometimes that they're in that double stop, right? But let's just keep it real basic right now. I'm going to use the A minor pentatonic licks and try and feel the changes and just 
stab those double stops, but there's no exact science. Just get them in there sometimes, right? So, you know, one, two, three, four. <laughs> Same shape over and over. In fact, you could glue your fingers into this little shape and play blues. Pretty cool. Um, now, let me talk about another concept. I want you to practice that, but here's another concept regarding chords and licks together. Um, let's just pretend that it's just an A7 for a minute, you know, like an A7 groove. know like just some kind of kind of thing right well another great concept for licks and chords together is think of your lick vocabulary your phrasing that you already have even if it's super basic right like this you know basic uh, three note the two, the two note blue solo even Right? Or a, a lick down the pentatonic. And if that was all over the A7, then any note of the lick, you can stab a chord in there instead of the lick. I'm going to keep it real simple now. Watch. I'll go down the pentatonic, right? There's no, it's all over the A7, so any note instead of, I mean, any. Yeah, any one of those notes of the lick, I can just substitute one of those single notes with the chord itself. Just exercising the blues scale as you'd practice it and just pick notes out to, to substitute with the A7 chord. So. not an exact science. Now, when you take that A blues scale, one of the little issues I noticed having just there, and I'm going to tell you, is that, you know, some of the notes of the blues scale aren't, you know, aren't totally in that A7 chord. And the main one really being the third of the, of the chord. 
Hello. Hello. Um, right there. But this note that's part of the pentatonic, they're so, it works still, you know, like even if you just start to nudge it a little bit, it starts to sound bluesy. Okay, so that also means that this note is not really in that chord, but it works. the just straight A blues scale, but look for those co chord tones because they'll really jump out over the progression. So let's just try it now. I'm going to just play just the A blues scale, and every once in a while, instead of one of the notes of the scale, I'm going to stab that A7. Then I'm going to do the exact same thing with the full D9 chord and the full E9 chord. So I'll do it nice and slow so you can check it out. In fact, the first note, instead of a note, I'm going to play the chord. Tongue twister. The same thing now, just with back to the original double stops I showed you. So check it out. That helped. Thanks again for supporting me at Marty Music. Uh, appreciate you signing in the newsletter at martymusic.com. Uh, supporting me right here at my very own project. Thank you so much. Uh, can't wait to see you again in another video real soon. Take care. <laughs> Nothing.